What if there was some sort of train you could sleep on? Well, there is such a thing. Welcome aboard the Sunrise Express, Seto and Izumo, the only Japanese sleeper train that runs daily. As the name suggests, the Sunrise Express is made up of two trains, which begin together in Tokyo and then uncouple in Okayama. Seto traveling down to Takamatsu in Shikoku, while Izumo is bound for Izumo-shi in Shimane. This train lovebird couple are 24 years old, and they act like it. Unable to spend a day apart, they reunite on the return trip to Tokyo. And it's this return trip that we'll be taking today. They'll be making a brief stop in Osaka shortly after midnight, where we have a private cabin booked. You know what's really bizarre? All the normal Osaka trains are on that platform and they're all kind of blue and they're completely busy. This is almost the last trains for people. They've got to get home before uh, they're stuck in the middle of Umeda. Uh, but the Sunrise platform is on track 11 that I've never been on and it's completely empty. And it's kind of this yellow color. It's pretty chill, I have to say. <laughs> I've got it all myself. Uh, I guess people have better things to do on a Friday night than uh, sleep on trains. I did bring some snacks, but uh, it looks like I forgot to buy my Ekiben, which is like, um, Eki means station and Ben is short for bento, so it's a uh, station lunchbox basically. So it's unfortunate again, there's no one on track 11, which is fine, but by me. Everyone's making last train on the other side. It's quite a nice little place. But as the clock crept past midnight, delays started to pop up on the board, and after slightly worrying that the sun would never rise, it finally came. And it was time to get on board. This is where the fun begins. I really have to crouch down on these. These are pretty fun. Right? It feels like you're going through tunnels, like uh, like the mines of Moria or something. But it's a train. It's really good, actually. I'm having fun. So this is the connector between the Izumo and the Seto. So if you're going from Tokyo down, they split off. But if you're going up, they connect. So this is between the two trains. We have to go through this little airlock. It's a bit like being in a space station. And I think you can have a look down there. So this is car seven. I'm in car six. Uh, unfortunately, I got the wrong, the wrong car the first time I woke up. Someone felt bad about that, but uh, you know, it's a little bit confusing. So you can type in your own password. to say this is um, pretty cool. I like it. Uh, I've got only this small car. This is the single. You can get a small room, the solo, but those are all booked out. And there also is the nobby nobby, which is just you're living on like a little, um, on the floor basically, but it's like a terrace floor, like bunk bed floor. There is also the deluxe, but it's pretty hard to book that. The single cabin on the Sunrise Express will cost you 19,570 yen for accommodation and travel fare combined, approximately $160. The cabin comes with a set of pajamas, pillow, blanket, bedside console, and one power outlet. Unfortunately, there is no Wi-Fi on this train. Cheaper seats with less privacy are available and can actually be used for free if you are holding the JR Rail Pass. But you still need to make a reservation, which you should, as the Sunrise Express is a particularly popular train. Travel on weekends will require at least a week or two in advance to book. Weekdays, which do not fall on a holiday, are significantly more accessible, so consider that before planning your trip. After settling in for a bit and changing into my pajamas, I set out to find the train shower. But then, drama. Unfortunately, since water is limited on the train, shower cards are in short supply, and I was unable to purchase one. So there will be no shower for us on this trip, not unlike any others. But let's take a quick look at the shower facilities anyway. No towel is provided, so be sure to bring your own. There is a hairdryer, however, and complimentary shampoo and conditioner. The water use is timed though, so be sure to rinse out any soap before your six minutes are up. And I'm not a complete animal. 
So sans my shower, I decided to at least brush my teeth before heading back to my cabin for the evening. There are a couple things in Japan that are very liberating. One of them is going to onsens and getting naked with the people for the first time. That's always a little bit uh, funny. But I think another is walking across a train in your pajamas. This is, this is honestly great. I just have a bit of a smile across my face. Uh, <laughs> I guess you can't see it because I've got my mask on, but you know, that's the state of the world. Um, yeah, it's fun ducking through the trains. We're about to go through the Nobi Nobi. So this is kind of like the dormitory area. I know it's a bit louder in these, uh, these uh, parts, but uh, the cheapest seat on the Seto Sunrise is the Nobi Nobi, which are like free seats. Um, kind of you sleeping on the floor, but it's like a bunk bed floor. So let's be quiet because they might hear us. So you'll notice that the cars have two levels. We have the upper level and the lower level. The upper level is definitely the better cars for the single rider. Unfortunately, I couldn't get one because it's so hard to book this. And let's go down the stairs to my car. I feel like we're stopping, that's strange. We shouldn't be stopping until we get to Shizuoka. But yeah, it's really fun. Oh no, it's getting quieter. So here we are. back in the cabin. I think we have stopped at uh, Maibota Station um, because I've been, I've been to Maibota quite a few times in Shiga. Yeah, we are currently in Maibara. So the Shinkansen platform is pretty iconic. Uh, it, it is almost 2 a.m. I'm gonna get up at 5.40 because I wanna see the sunrise. Um, but I'm just having so much fun on this train just walking around or just seeing everything. Um, honestly, I didn't think it was gonna be this good. Yeah, it's bizarre how hard it is to get it to. It's more expensive, it's harder, it's slower, but there's just something so, I don't know how to say, comfy about this little room. I love it. If I could travel across the all of Japan in the sleep train, I would do it. Unfortunately, they only seem to go parts of Japan, but I'm loving it so far. But I think it's time to, uh, get some rest because we've got a sunrise tomorrow. So uh, until then, peace. Well, that's the wrong, the transition just failed. While most parts of the train are cramped, there is a small lounge area with vending machines for drinks. No food is sold on board, so be sure to pack some. I was able to pick up a small chicken salad for breakfast while in Osaka, which cost me about $3. This is a lot slower than the Shinkansen and a lot more expensive. I think the Shinkansen from Osaka to Tokyo is about 12,000 yen, which is about maybe $100. This is almost double that and it takes seven hours. Um, even with even if you price in the price of a cheap hotel, which would be about 3,000 yen, it's still cheaper to get the Shinkansen in and then just save your time by about five hours. But this is special, right? Like, um, this is an experience that's kind of not really gonna be around in Japan for much longer. And um, if you get the chance, definitely take it. Yeah, this has been really special. It's something about having your own private space that you can just retreat to you can go out and um, explore the train and it really makes it feel like a little vacation even though I've only been doing this for about seven hours now. A student came up and talked to me on the train which is quite rare but uh, he's just finishing high school because it is spring and he's uh, about to graduate and he was just telling me that he's you know the first time on this train he's been looking forward to it for a long time and I can see why. Well, we made it to Tokyo. It's about uh, 7.30, I think, now. And uh, it's, this is actually the first time that I've been in Tokyo in about two years. Apart from getting off at the train station when I was traveling across Japan, 
Uh, like I said, I don't generally come to Tokyo very much. Not that fond of it. It is quite pretty in some parts though. Uh, spring's just coming on and uh, the Imperial Palace is actually really close to Tokyo Station. So I think I'll go check that out. And actually, I think there's the grave of um, a rebellious samurai pretty close to the, to the uh, palace. Uh, I think it's Taira Masakoto. And that's the legend behind the Gasha Dokoro, the giant invisible skeleton that goes around eating people. Uh, legend has it that uh, they rebelled and his daughter was a sorceress. So she summoned a giant skeleton to uh, eat all the nobles and uh, destroy Kyoto basically. Uh, and they cut off his head in punishment. They took it to a little shrine in Edo, which later became Tokyo. So it's very expensive to have property here or anything in this part of Tokyo, just next to the Imperial Palace, but they do have his tomb. So I may as well go check that out. Well, it looks like the Imperial Palace doesn't open for another hour and a half. I did get here pretty early, I suppose. On, it is the Sunrise Express after all. Uh, I guess I'll go look around for other things to take photos of. Until the next video though, you could check out uh, maybe this one, where I travel across Japan for less than $100 on the Seishin Juhachi Kipu. 46 hours of nightmare trains. Oh, and like if you liked the video.